Okay, hi everyone. So we're going to continue to talk about uh, Dalton and the law of multiple proportion, uh, where we left off uh, in the previous video. And then hopefully we can get into Dalton's atomic theory and talk about the postulates of atomic theory. Okay, so um, if you remember back to the law of multiple proportion, what, uh, what happens there is that when we have two elements forming a series of compounds, again the example that we used there was the nitrogen and oxygen, right? If we keep uh, one of the elements to be one gram, in that case, in the example that we did, we, keep, we kept the uh, oxygen to be one gram, then we find that the masses of the second element, which is the nitrogen in this case, uh, can be expressed with respect to each other as um, integer ratios or ratio of whole numbers, okay? And if you go back to that example, you remember that we've, we actually had three compounds. All of them have nitrogen and oxygen in them. And we find that A has to have four times the number of nitrogen as in C, and then B has twice the number of nitrogen uh, compared to C, okay? And then so uh, one of the key insights into this is that if you know the formula of one of those compounds, you're basically able to find the formula of the other compounds because they're all related to each other uh, as these uh, simple whole number ratios, right? So in this particular example, we said that if C happens to be NO, then we know the formula of B and A because B would just be twice the number of uh, nitrogen, which is N2O, and A would be four times. Okay, so we're going to do uh, another example of the law of multiple proportion. Okay, so let, let's look at this problem right here. Okay, so it says here that you have two different compounds and they're formed by carbon and oxygen, okay? And in this case, you're given mass percentages. Remember, we calculated mass percentages a couple of videos ago when we talked about law of definite proportion. So if you forget, you can go back to that video or uh, look back at your notes to see how you made those calculations. But we're told here that compound one has 42.9% carbon by mass and then 57.1% oxygen by mass. And here are the percentages for the second compound. The question here is sh uh, tells you to show that the data are consistent with the law of multiple proportion. Okay? Okay, so let's work through that problem that I just showed you on the law of multiple proportion. So what we're being asked to do is to show that the data that we have, uh, which is given in the percent masses, will support the law of multiple proportion. So the first thing to understand about law of multiple proportion, if you want to show that something supports this law, is to uh, understand that there's two components in the law of multiple proportion, right? So the first one is, um, what you want to show in the end is that if you were to make one of the elements one gram, okay, so first off you have to make one element one gram, okay, then what you have to uh, show if they if the data support the law of multiple proportion what you have to show is that show that um, the second element right the second element um, mass ratio is a ratio of integers or whole numbers in this case okay ratio of integers, okay? So that's what we have to do if we want to show that the data support the law of multiple proportion. Now, going back to that problem earlier, you can look, you know, uh, rewind the video a little bit uh, to show that uh, problem again, but it tells you that you have a certain percentage of carbon, a certain percentage of oxygen in compound one, certain percentage of carbon and oxygen in compound two. The easiest way to kind of look at that is to uh, make a table that looks something like this, okay? And I'm just gonna, this is not a very good looking table, but hopefully you get the idea here that I wanna have the compound here, compound one, and uh, here's compound two, okay? And then what I wanna do here is write on this part the uh, mass of compound, okay? Mass of compound that I have, and then mass of carbon and then mass of oxygen okay now uh, we're given the the information that we're given is in percentages 
So in order for us to be able to uh, use it in terms of law of multiple proportion, we have to convert it to masses in units of grams, okay? So the first thing you want to do is just make an assumption. If you're given something in percentages, the easiest thing is to assume that there's 100 grams of material. So if you assume that there's 100 grams of material in both cases, then basically the percentages then can be converted to masses, right? So in the first compound, we were told there are 42.9% carbon. That means that if there's 100 grams material, there should be 42.9 grams of carbon and 57.1 grams of oxygen. Again, if you don't remember these numbers, you can just rewind back uh, to the part of the video earlier where I talk, where I show you the problem. And then for this one, similarly, we're going to have 27.3 grams of carbon and 72.7 .7 grams of oxygen. Okay? Now, the next thing as uh, shown here on the top, as you can see here on the top, is that we want to make one of these elements one gram. It doesn't really matter which one. You can make carbon one gram if you want, or you make oxygen one gram. Either way, you're going to get the same answer in the end. Okay? So, let's try this out. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another table here at the bottom. Okay? where I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to have the compound, compound 1 in this case, and compound 2. And in this case, I'm going to, let's say, make a carbon. Let's say this is my carbon. I'm going to do another one here. Let's say this is my carbon mass of carbon and mass of oxygen. Okay? So I'm going to make my carbon 1 gram, let's say, in both cases. Okay? So the question then is, if my carbon is 1 gram, what is the mass of my oxygen? Now, we know that when carbon is 42.9, oxygen is 57.1, right? But when carbon is 1, what's oxygen? Well, that's pretty easy, right? It's just a matter of taking this number, 57.1. Hopefully everybody sees this, 57.1, and divide that by 42. 0.9, right? If you do that, then you should get the amount of uh, mass of oxygen that, that will pair up with one gram of carbon, okay? And you can do the same here at the bottom. I know that when I have 27.3 grams of carbon, I have 72.7 gram of oxygen in compound 2, but what happens if I only have one gram of carbon? Well, it's just the amount of oxygen, the mass of oxygen will then just be 72.7 gram of oxygen divided by 27.3 grams of carbon. Okay, this is oxygen on the top. Uh, this is again ox uh, oxygen on the top, carbon on the bottom. Okay, let's calculate this out real quick to get uh, our answer. Okay, so if you do this, what you get on the, for the top one should be uh, 1.331 to 1, right? So 1.331 to 1. So one, what does that mean? 1.331 grams of oxygen for every gram of carbon, right? And then for the bottom one, for compound 2, you should be getting 2.663 grams of oxygen for every every one gram of carbon that you have. Okay, now let's go back to that slide earlier where I talk about um, how to prove or how to show that you you know the, this number support the law of multiple proportions. So remember that I said that the first part is to make uh, one of those elements one gram. Now the second part is to show that the masses of the second element, right, for when they're expressed per gram of one, the first element is a ratio of integers. So let's go back down to these numbers now. So what you want to show at this point is to show that 1.33 and 2.66 when you reduce this down to a simpler number is a ratio of small integers or small whole numbers and you can easily see hopefully let me just move this over here you can hopefully see uh, fairly easily that and you can use a calculator if you want to do this but ideally you have some feeling for these numbers as well so 2.663 grams is for compound 2 right this is oxygen in compound 2 and then in compound 1, we have 1.331 grams of oxygen per gram of carbon, right? This is all oxygen here, okay, per gram of carbon. And if you use a calculator or you can do it in your head, you find that this ratio reduces to about 2 to 1, okay? 2 grams of oxygen for in compound 2 in 2 for every 1 gram of oxygen 
in compound one. Okay, so hopefully you can see that that's what we just did. We show that um, this data support the law of multiple proportion, and we did that by um, calculating or by by using the data and converting into two steps. First step is to make one of the element one gram. The second step is to show that the ratio of the second element, once we express it as a per one gram of the first element, is a ratio of integers. Now, what I want you to do now is to do the same uh, idea again, but instead of assuming carbon as one gram like we did in this example, why don't you start by assuming by trying to uh, use express it per gram of oxygen. So in other words, mass of oxygen is one gram and express carbon in terms per gram of oxygen. See if you get the same ratio like the one I showed you here, which is two grams of uh, oxygen in two versus one gram of oxygen in one. Now you're going to get ratio of carbon in this case, but see what you get in terms of the ratio of carbon uh, in compound two versus compound one. Okay.